I'm with the Jahai tribe, and we're surrounded by danger. The hunters could become the hunted. The world's oldest blowpipe hunters survive using ancient weapons. Oh, my goodness. Oh. The skill. And animal cunning. Incredible. Mm. Fantastic. I'm Hayden Turner. As a zookeeper, I looked after monkeys for 10 years. But today, in this Malaysian rainforest, I'm with the Jahai tribe, and they're hunting them. Here, wildlife is food, not a zoo exhibit. The survival of these men depends on the animals around them. These hunters understand animal behaviour here better than anyone in the world. And I want to learn from them. Masters of stealth and precision, the Jahai have developed supremely efficient weapons. Their blowpipes shoot deadly darts at 180 kilometers per hour, nearly as fast as a peregrine falcon in flight. I'll be with these men for the next 10 days, and I've got so much to learn. Only in his 30s, Aziz is already the most accurate shooter in the village. Quiet and focused. He has four young children to feed. His youngest is just three months old. <laughs> Quadri's the head of the small village where I'm staying. He has to ensure that all eight families living there are fed every day. At 45, he's been hunting for over 30 years. He's the best hunter in the village. On this hunt, the monkeys have the advantage. High up in the treetops, 35 metres above us, they can see for 20 kilometres. To make a kill, Quadri and Aziz need to be within 50 metres of the monkeys. So it's with stealth that they outwit their clever prey. I'm really worried that I'm going to be more of a problem on the hunt than uh, a positive force. It's all about stealth, it's all about quiet, it's all about whispering, it's all about hand signals. It's not a run and a chase through the forest. So, with these size 10s on, uh, I'm going to have to watch my step. This hunt has three phases. Find the prey, get close, then deliver a fatal dart. But the monkeys mustn't see, hear or smell us. So we have to stay hidden. This is really draining me. It's the humidity that's getting to me. I've never been in the Malaysian rainforest before and I'm just not used to it. It's early in the morning, so Quadri and Aziz know the monkeys will be feeding. They hunt over a huge range, covering an area bigger than London. But Quadri's led us straight to the right trees. We've got to spot the monkeys before they spot us. Intelligent, social, and highly vocal, they communicate with each other over a kilometre. 
alert one monkey and the whole troop will take flight. Quadri spots some monkeys. Now the hunt is on. These hunters can spot animals I can't even see. Because they use their vision every day to find prey, their eyesight has become much better than 2020. Quadri sees that some monkeys have stopped eating. It's a sign that they're getting wary. We stop. Hidden from view, we watch and wait. We've already hiked five kilometers in 32 degree heat. The men have hardly broken a sweat, but I'm soaked through. Pusky monkey. Oh, monkey, monkey. Quadri knows the species because of the troop's behaviour. Dusky leaf monkeys spread out when foraging, and now they're on the move. These monkeys can weigh up to 12 kgs, but they'll only yield about half as much meat as a turkey of the same size. To feed all 35 people in the village, the men need to catch at least two. That could be an alarm call. Have we lost the prey? I'm really torn here. Part of me wants the animals to get away, but if we don't bring back some meat, there's only maize, rice and tapioca to eat in the village, which is all the tribe had for breakfast, their only other meal of the day. Finally, I see one of the monkeys. The troops within range, just 40 metres away. To better their chance of a kill, Aziz and Quadri separate. Separating doubles the hunter's chance of success. But it also doubles the risk of being spotted. The darts are tipped with a deadly poison. Once it enters the bloodstream, it stops the animal's heart. That can happen in seconds, or it can take hours, depending on where the dart hits and the size of the prey. Z shoots. He hits a monkey. The darts are silent, so the other monkeys aren't alarmed. Quadri takes a shot. He hits another. We've been hunting for five hours, but we could still go back empty-handed. If the monkeys are startled, they'll be off before the poison takes effect. Bit of a coughing sound the monkey makes before it falls out of the tree.
But the second monkey is still in the tree. I can see it. Up there. Well. Success. Nothing is wasted. Brains, tail, liver, everything is eaten, except where the poison dart pierced the skin. Even so, these two monkeys will only provide about 8 kgs of meat, about the same as six chickens. And it doesn't really matter what my perception of wildlife is, because to the Jahai, wildlife is food, is their family, and the forest supplies them with everything. This place is a very important place to them. Without monkey meat, the Jahai's diet would be so deficient in calories, they wouldn't survive. 40% of the Jahai's protein comes from monkeys. But at least tonight, everyone will eat well. Because the Jahai way is to share, community is everything. <laughs> Each family receives an equal share, which they cook and eat at home. 80% of the Jahai's food is protein from meat or fish. The survival of the whole village depends on the hunters. The Jahai live in the northernmost part of the Malay Peninsula, near the border with Thailand in the Belem Temengor Forest. They are one of 18 indigenous tribes of mainland Malaysia. But as the Western world encroaches onto their land, their traditional way of life is being eroded. Today, there are fewer than 900 Jahai. Their ancestors were the first people to live in this ancient forest. For thousands of years, they've passed their traditions and hunting strategies down through the generations. This forest still gives the Jahai everything they need. Shelter, food, medicines, weapons. It provides, but it also kills. The Jahai share this forest with dangerous animals. They can't grow many crops or vegetables as their village would be raided by hungry elephants. A tiger took a young boy from a village nearby. It's too dangerous for the Jahai to keep any farm animals or store any fresh meat. So the hunters must bring home food every day. And they use only ancient weapons. These pieces are made by hand and all the materials come from the forest. So it's not like uh, you've gone down the shop to try and buy a few parts to make your blowpipe. Every single part comes out of the environment. The smallest bend and the blowpipe wouldn't work. These precision weapons must be as straight as the barrel of a gun. Yet Quadri and Jakob only use a razor blade and their eyesight. Jakob lives in a neighbouring village. At 45, he's a very experienced hunter and a close friend of Quadri's. And today, they've joined forces to hunt a giant rodent. But every time these men go hunting, they risk their lives. We're in the same terrain, in the same environment. There's tigers, an Asiatic elephant. And at any point, the hunters could become the hunted. We're en route to hunt porcupines. From what I gather, we're going to get the tracks, locate the burrow, and then smoke them out. Now, I've had first-hand experience with porcupines in the wild, and they can turn grown men into running children. Just one porcupine can provide 15 kgs of meat. High in fat and calories, one animal can give five times more meat than a small monkey. There are 24 species found worldwide. Today we're hunting Malayan porcupines. 
They have over 30,000 needle sharp quills, weigh up to 30 kgs, and they're aggressive. When threatened, they will attack. Porcupine are nocturnal, so we're looking for tracks that will lead us to their burrows. Even in this dense undergrowth, it takes Quadri, Yakub and Caillou just minutes to find footprints. Caillou is in his 60s and a grandfather to two, but he's still an expert tracker. So here, I can see the toenails there. Like here, here. These footprints mean that porcupines are close, that elephants may be closer. Just last night, the cameraman and I were woken up by a 30-year-old bull elephant. He was investigating what was in our tent whilst we were still in it. It was a tense time. Last year, wild elephants killed 500 people. Now, we're really on our guard. For thousands of years, the Jahai have lived with the threat of elephants. They do everything they can to avoid them, but even in this vast forest, confrontations still happen. Caillou's keeping watch, but I'm not sure what Quadri's doing. Jakob, what are these, these for? in the ground to block mm. the holes. So you put them, you put them like this. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that'll be in front of the hole. So the animal can only come out of one hole. First, we've got to find the burrow. Caillou is searching for the freshest tracks. Even though the prints are only four centimeters across, by spotting minute differences in the definition of the tracks, the hunters have led us straight to an active burrow. Porcupine burrows are a complex system of tunnels and chambers, measuring up to 18 metres long. With any number of entry and exit holes, the hunters must block off each one. So the men are now finding the entry and the exit holes. The men are very, very cautious because these things have to be stuck in very, very hard. This is a formidable creature. So the men now have decided that this is the burrow. These are the two points of entry and exit. They check for other areas, and it seems to be ready to time to smoke them out. The plan is to fan in enough smoke to alarm the animal, but not kill it while it's still inside the burrow. <laughs> okay. So the smoking has started down there. They're fanning the smoke into the burrow. And the smoke will rise up the burrow. The men have strategically placed the sticks in a way that the animal's head will be able to come through, but not its body. And that way, Jakob will be able to spear it without getting a, a quill in his leg, or in my legs for that matter. You can see the smoke coming out right now that quickly, the porcupine could come out here any minute. I really don't want to get close to this creature, 
a porcupine quill could go right through my arm. A lot of people underestimate the uh, fierce ability of porcupines. I've seen them in the wild myself, and I've seen large predators like leopard and lion try and take on a porcupine, and they will assault. They will, they will back themselves in either sideways. Close. There's another bat. <laughs> Did you see him? There's a lot of bats flying out of here as well. I can see why the men and myself are a little bit on edge. One spear kills the porcupine in seconds. My goodness. Just came out of there like lightning. <laughs> but this hunt isn't over. There's another one coming. The sticks give the men time to spear the porcupine, but I didn't realize that it would only be seconds. I can hear the porcupine's quills. I know it's close, but it stopped moving. Suddenly, Quadri takes a big risk. So that one's actually already dead. Asphyxiated by the smoke. Two porcupines from the one burrow. And this is on the top of the list of meat for the Jahai. That is a very, very good day's hunting. These two porcupines will provide about 30 kilograms of meat. This will feed everyone in Yokov and Kodri's villages tonight. But these porcupines don't just provide food. So these are the best, these are the best ones for, yeah. for the nose? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The Jahai use porcupine quills as jewellery. Quills are modified hair, made from keratin, the same substance as our hair and nails. Similar to the shaft of a feather, they are hollow tubes, but with a very, very sharp point. <laughs> When did you get your your nose pierced? That would be a good one for my nose. Pilih, pilih, de, pilih. Pilih yang ada, dia ada kilo tu baru ada. Hmm. Okay, Kodri, go. <laughs> oh, takut lah. Takut jaki. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so that was exactly to plan. It was straight out of the Juhai textbook of hunting. Incredible. Just great success. I mean, the men are going home with fantastic amount of meat for the, the rest of the village. What more can you say? The villagers never know what's on the evening menu. There are no hunting seasons here. The men don't decide what to hunt. They just enter the forest and read the signs left by their prey. The Jahai survive because they know so very well the animals that they share this forest with.
A new day, a new hunt, who are going fishing. Over half of the Jahai's diet is fish. We're heading a kilometre downstream of the village, but we're not taking any nets, lines or rods. All we need is these logs, because they contain a deadly poison, rotenone. Found in at least 68 plants around the world, it's a naturally occurring insecticide used by organic farmers. It inhibits the ability of cells to absorb oxygen. The men are about to release this poison into the creek. As it flows downstream, it suffocates the fish. They rise to the surface where they're easily caught. But first, we've got to extract it. You can see that's where the branch went in on the inside there. And this is the bark area. And that seems to be what they're after because that has got the toxin. Rotenone is most deadly once it enters the bloodstream. So the men take great care not to injure themselves as they beat and then wring out the bark to release the poison. The rotenone forms a toxic foam. It's deadly, especially to children. To keep them safe, they are forbidden from leaving the village. <coughs> The Jahai are fiercely protective of their children. As a father to a young family, I understand how they feel. But I live in the UK. Here, we're surrounded by danger at all times. This is a very different world. Is it poisonous to humans? This stream will be deadly for three days. No one will drink this toxic water for several days, but the fish are safe to eat. Only small amounts of rotenone enter their bloodstream through their gills. The Jahai use the poison just once a year in each stream. This protects the fish's numbers. I think this is going to be easy. Look at that. Wow. Hey. Oh. oh no. I've done the first fish I dropped. Good? Good? Good food? We've got a fair few of these. These small fish are an important source of calcium for the Jahai. But can I catch one? <laughs> I didn't think I'd be catching fish with my bare hands. They are a little bit stunned though. It takes half an hour to collect all the fish from this small creek. But this isn't the only toxin that the Jahai use. Masters of poison. They know the Ipo tree produces the deadliest sap of all. Just half a teaspoon could be fatal. This tree is the source of the Jahai's killing power. They've been using it for thousands of years. Quadri told me to cover my eyes because getting any of this in your eye can be very, very dangerous. It amazes me that he hasn't got any eye protection whatsoever and hasn't got one bit in his eye yet. This tree produces anterin, a cardiac glycoside. It slows, then stops the heart. This poison is strong enough to kill a man in minutes. No. Don't get it on yourself. No. It's okay. You have to look. Ah. Will I die? <laughs> I'll wash it ah. for sure. The smallest cut or scratch on my hand and I'd be dead. To work, the poison must enter the bloodstream. The Jahai have found the perfect way to inject it. That is a lethal weapon and there's no antidote. 
the men applied just the right amount to kill without overloading the dart because that would affect its flight. Kodri, hmm. has anyone ever stuck themselves? These darts weigh less than one gram and are 30 centimeters long. This length gives them greater accuracy and a better trajectory. With a hand-carved flight for stability, they can travel over 180 kilometers an hour. They fly silently, so the hunters don't alert their prey when they miss. It's a crucial piece of Jahai engineering. So they're just slowly, slowly shaving little pieces off this palm frond into a, a round skewer-like dart and then finally, finally hone me in till it's like a needle. Oh! <laughs> that is so sharp. The hunters only take 10 darts per hunt. I would need 100. <laughs> I would finish 200 in one hour. Pipe hunters, the Jahai's skills have been honed over thousands of years. Each hunter then perfects them over his own lifetime. And now it's my turn. So, this is blowpipe school. <laughs> okay. Now, there's the target. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now you show me first. I've never done this before. The quadri effortlessly balances the two meter long pipe. <laughs> first go. Oh no. I'm never going to be able to do this. So, what do I have? I've got a lot to learn. Quadri's been hunting since he was 12 years old. <laughs> this is not going to be pretty. Okay. Let's go. Oh, I believe it. That is the <laughs> There's the difference. Mine actually, you just penetrate a few centimeters, maybe an inch or so. Theirs go right through and only leave the flight on the outside. Okay. Let's see. Shall we move back here? Kodri. Kodri. Now, it's time to up the stakes. I'm feeling very unconfident at this point. The men can shoot accurately up to 50 metres. They could hit a can of drink from the other end of an Olympic swimming pool. Let's see how I measure up at that distance. I'm going to copy everything you do here. That is incredible. But it. <laughs> uh, but it. But it. That is incredible. 
right on the target. Oh, wow. My dog pooped. Fantastic. Oh, boy. Here we go. This is going to take a... Look at air, baby. Did you get the middle? I it. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't even make the target. I didn't even make the range. Are you breathing from here? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely technique here. I don't have the technique or the capacity. They like smoking all day. And they've still got better lung capacity than I have. What's that saying? Get back to the gym, HT. But for now, it's back to work. Today, all the villagers had to eat is wild tubers and tapioca. So we're going blowpipe hunting. From the moment we start this hunt, Quadri Yakub and Aziz read the forest like a book. It's late in the day, so the men know prey will be out looking for food. It's a small squirrel, but it's still food. With 35 people to feed, these hunters have to take advantage of every opportunity that this forest provides. These guys, the men here, walk through the bush barefoot and silently. Not me. Suddenly, Quadri stops us. The squirrel has frozen. It's on full alert. Squirrels can see in a 300 degree wide arc with exceptionally sharp focus. Without moving its head, it can see in detail what is below, above, and next to it. Once the squirrel relaxes, it's safe for us to edge closer. Agile, camouflaged, and only as big as a man's hand. These squirrels are tiny targets. I can barely see them, but Aziz is preparing to take aim. Squirrels have better sight, smell, and hearing than humans. So it's only a matter of time before it spots us. Aziz takes his shot. starts all over again. It was very interesting to watch the, how the men work together. Like predators would do in the wild from what I've seen. There's, a, there's two snipers going out. One's actually ready to shoot. The other one is a spotter. Their teamwork pays off. Aziz has a squirrel in his sights. But one wrong move and the prey will be off. Aziz can't let his concentration waver for an instant. The squirrel is unaware that we're meters below. Aziz's first dart missed, but he's aiming for a target only 20 centimetres big. 
it's not even as big as my boot. He's hit it. The poison works within seconds on this small animal. The first dart didn't make a noise. But I heard when the second dart hit, it had a really nice, like a thudding sound. Where did the dart down? In the side. In the side of the ribs. And the men can actually tell by the sound of the impact of the dart where it has hit the animal on its body. That's it. Right there, you can see his tail just in the tree there. They're just trying to knock it out of the tree right now. When in doubt, you climb to this part of the world. Oh. My goodness, oh. the skill and the strength. There's nothing easy about getting food from this forest. Up, probably about one story high now. Well, I'll keep what you do. Well, I'll keep what you do. Probably about two stories high. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> from about 40 metres away, I would say. At least 50 metres even. <sighs> 150 feet and right in the, in the ribs. This hunt isn't over. We need at least three squirrels to feed one family. Ever alert, Jakub sees something. Aziz hits it, even though I can't see what it is yet. Definitely heard a thud hit the ground. Not to be outdone, Quadri's got a surprise for me as well. Another one. Another one. Where? Where? Where did the Just under the under the arm. like the best hunting professional. Incredible, mm. fantastic. What I've learned from the Jahai is that the forest is everything to them. The plants, the animals, this is their life. They're not cut off or detached from the Western world. They choose to be here. They need this forest for their survival and to preserve their culture. It's been a great privilege for me to learn from these amazing hunters. <laughs>